Well, it's last one hour of the trading session of the trading week and it has been a decent one. Yes, we are in the red right now, but just around the flat line, 26,200 fresh record high scaled yet again this week. And we're pretty much holding on to those gains. Yes, for the day, if you're looking at it, we're off the highest point of the trading session. But given the kind of momentum we have seen off late, can't really complain much. Sugar stocks are in a sweet, uh, you know, sweet spot today. So whether it's a Balrampur Chini, a Sri Renuka, a Praj Industries or the other ancillaries as well, there's that expectation of an ethanol price hike coming in as well as the hike in the MSV prices. On account of that, some of these stocks are fairly excited. In fact, BPCL and the rest of the energy pack from the oil and gas space and the PSU basket is mighty excited. So a BPCL will come up for you on the screen. Look at that gain of around 6%. IOC, uh, HPCL, they're also up anywhere between 3 to 5% in the trading session. So good amount of gains coming in for select public sector entities. NSC rejig is expected today. Remember, come Monday morning, you'll have new entrants in the Nifty 50. Uh, you will have BEL as well as Trend, which will be forming part of the Nifty 50 index. But bulk of the inflows will happen today itself. And in the last one hour, we're watching out for that. But overall, Aisha, global markets pretty somber, broader markets sideways. Um, quiet this Friday afternoon. Oh, yeah, and that's okay. It's fine for the markets to pause a little bit after the kind of heady run that we've seen all through this week. Although Europe has started off marginally positive and looks like it could jump a little bit more than that. Uh, otherwise, the pre-market uh, pre rates for the US, that's absolutely quiet with a little bit of a red line or negative bias, so to speak. Asia, of course, has had a, a very solid move. We're nowhere close to catching up with that, especially Japan, Hong Kong, and even Shanghai, which closed in with another 3% of a move. A uh, lot of stocks as well. Anisha flagged off some. There's, of course, Balram Purchini. The comments coming in from the food minister saying that they may actually be uh, looking to increasing the MSP for sugar. Some of those sugar stocks, of course, reacting very well. There's, of course, Westlife after the Goldman Sachs node upgraded it to a buy from the earlier neutral up the target price to uh, 1,075 as well. And remember, some of these uh, QSR companies have really been languishing in terms of their same store sales growth. So a little bit of a revival is um, what's on the cards and uh, you know a spree of upticks and updates coming in over there upgrades I beg your pardon United Spirits uh, Macquarie remains uh, uh, their underperformed rating target price 1100 they're saying they're expecting flattish demand trends in the second quarter muted volume growth also is what is likely so that stock is uh, down about almost 4 odd percent as we speak right now. But let's welcome on board our experts and find out what they're making of the market. Kunal Botra, Naresh Mirani, Sunil Subramaniam all join in on the show. Kunal, a bit of a pause and I guess it's only a healthy one at that. What are we staring at for next week? The way the Asian markets are panning out, uh, you know, 2 to 1.5% move for Nikkei as well as Hang Seng. And many of the other emerging markets are also, I think, on the verge of a multi-month breakout. So I think on the back of this, this looks like a very strong renewed momentum. So I think this 400, 500 point dip, what we're seeing on the bank Nifty and this 30, 40 point uh, you know, correction on the Nifty, I think should be taken as a buying opportunity as a contrarian play because uh, I think even if the index remains a bit muted for the next couple of days, I believe on the back of this renewed momentum across the globe, we could probably be looking at a, a recovery as well as a breakout of the previous highs for the indices. Looking for a breakout in key indices, Narish. What's the view on energy and metals? A BPCL, HPCL, Hindalco, all of these stocks are in focus. So, continue to have a very bullish view on uh, energy as well as on aluminium side of metals. So, if you look at uh, the way crude has broken below that 70 75 mark and stays there, is a big positive for OMCs. And then, when we look at the longer term charts for BPCL, HPCL, uh, IOC, They've gone through a long consolidation. The last 10 year returns are not great. They've given a breakout and have been consistently trending higher. So that looks very promising. Uh, still a buy on dips from here on as well. I have a positive bias given the exposure. Second, uh, looking at Indalco, uh, the stock made a new all time high. You have aluminium prices which have gone up. So from a low of 2300 to 2250, they're back to 2600 plus. The last one year high is closer to 2700 odd. So it's been a good recovery in aluminium prices as well as alumina has done well. So on dips, uh, Nalco and Hindalco still remain a buying. 
Uh, Sunil, hi afternoon. What is it that you're making of the market construct? A strong global rally. We're very much part of that. Uh, do you think it'll continue unabated in, uh, you know, in the backdrop of all the stimulus measures from uh, the Chinese central bank and, of course, the U.S. Uh, interest rate uh, curve, um, you know, turn as well? Uh, yes, uh, I think at least for the next week, 10 days. So why do I put a break at 10 days? Because the R earnings season will start. And as you know, uh, you know, many of the segments have factored in future earnings growth at very rich levels like uh, mid-caps and small caps for starters, but within that, defense, infra. So I would say that uh, uh, the earnings season could be the next trigger for the market from a domestic perspective. Uh, international, the news looks good because uh, crude uh, easing, I think the forward crude prices are trending below 70 now. So that's very good news for India. Uh, the U.S. presidential election, while it's an overall uncertainty issue, I think India-specific uh, may not be. But if a Trump is coming to uh, power, then that again is negative China, positive India. So I think a lot of triggers there. The monsoon, for example, normal distribution, the spatial distribution you need to study a bit. But curry sowing has been ahead of uh, target. So that augurs well for inflation. So if food and fuel, both the inflation are trending down, that may be RBI uh, triggers RBI into a more accommodative stance. Whether a rate cut happens in October first week or not, I don't think uh, it's early days for that. But at least the outlook of a trending accommodative stance augurs well for the equity markets. So overall, I see lots of positives, uh, but sector-specific, stock-specific, the earnings season will give us more clarity and guidance. Waiting by for that earnings season, but talking about earnings, at least the cues coming in from Accenture weren't as bad. I mean, uh, there were positives in terms of the consulting revenue bouncing back, headcount addition being at a 10 quarter high, the fact that the bookings have been strong, book to bill was around 1.2x, that definitely augurs well for the Indian markets as well. Um, Sunil, what's your view on IT? Should one buy ahead of the earnings season or just wait by, let the commentary come in and only take fresh positions there? No, I would be a buyer in the IT because to me, uh, it's not just about this. It's the fact that the rate cut cycle is positive for the BFSI space in the US. And when the BFSI space there is well, that they are the biggest buyers of Indian IT product. So that's one. The second is the situation around the fact that uh, when foreign flows come in, uh, passive flows tend to dominate. And IT is a significant part of the index. So they would automatically get their buying support from FII buying. So I would say that the domestic earnings season outlook is not so critical for IT because it's a stable single digit earnings growth which has been there for years. That's going to continue. I don't think any big negative surprises should come through. So I would remain a, a buyer in IT, you know, buying on dips. Interesting. That's the take coming in on IT. Kunal, what's your reading? Uh, because, you know, IT has nicely now moved. It's no more a selective one or two odd stock story. The index at an all time high. What lies ahead now? So I think the path should be on the upside again for the IT index. Last one week or so, we've seen the sector churn playing out for the IT index where the money seems to be moving out from the IT index in terms of profit booking and uh, moving back towards the financials. But I believe largely when we look at this kind of a three-month, four-month rally from 32, 33,000 for the Nifty IT index towards, I think, 40 to 500 or 43,000 was the high the IT index has made uh, in, in the last one or two weeks. I think it's been a fantastic run for the IT stocks. And this generally uh, indicates a new trend in the making. Now, there could be a pause in between. There could be sideways consolidations for stocks, maybe price corrections for stocks which get back into overbought territory. But that should be taken as a buying opportunity. We looked at uh, you know, TCS just about a couple of days back when the stock was uh, uh, you know, an underperformer of sorts. I think it, got, it had fallen down by 9% as compared to Wipro, uh, Infosys, uh, uh, Infosys uh, HL Tech as well as Tech Mahindra, where these stocks are corrected by 4 to 5%. And that stock has played a catch up. TCS has played a catch up and it's covered up the underperformance today after that move. So, which means that what we are looking out for is just a normalized correction into these stocks. Uh, and I think at dips, one should be looking at buying. At dips, one should be looking at buying. Nuresh, um, what's the preference between uh, Excide versus Amara? Both are up 4 to 5%. And the other one I wanted to discuss with you is Westlife Development. That stock is up 7%. And some of those graphics will come up for you on the screen wherein Goldman Sachs has upgraded the stock and the target price is 1,075. Uh, what's the view on these two pockets? So both these names now uh, trend together. So either of them uh, is fine uh, depending on one's preference. But the trend is... Uh, been a little lower over the last few months. Today is a one-off day, so I would still wait out and not really get into the stock right away. 
I would wait for a follow-up action tomorrow and then maybe take a call. A very quick break, quite a few buzzers there. We'll address them on the other side. Still a little somber, although flat, 26,197 is where we're currently at. Sugar, of course, is a you know sweet pocket. We just flagged off that. And the fact that reports are suggesting that the MSP of sugar might actually be up. So that's definitely one entire sector which is looking quite smart. Also, UBS has come out with a very detailed note on the entire pharma sector. For Sun Pharma, they've initiated a buy with a target price of 2450. Sipla target price at 2060 as well. Although on Azidus Live, they've initiated a sell, as is the case with the Dr. Reddy's as well as Oropharma and Lupin as well. They're saying that the trends are now weakening in India and US and the street is underappreciating the growth slowdown in both India as well as the US. So Neil wanted to get your thoughts in on pharma because, um, you know, you've definitely seen the tide turn for the pharma sector, but not long lasting, says UBS at least. Uh, I tend to agree with the with the UBS report because I think that the US is in a very fine balance uh, with the rate cut scenario, the Fed delaying the rate cut and then launching it in the hopes of uh, delaying or avoiding a recession. But we still don't know whether they will succeed in that, right? So while the rate cuts are good news for equity markets overall, for interest rates, for BFSI and all of that, the final results on the US economy, I think, are yet to be stated. And I think that there are multiple reports there with conflicting views saying that uh, some indicators are indicating that it, there could be a recession a few quarters away. So I think from that perspective, if there is a recession, mild or even full-blown, uh, that's not good news for the pharma sector. So it makes sense to stay uh, at the sidelines, uh, wait maybe very stock-specific in that. And within pharma, I would still say domestic pharma, to me, hospitals, diagnostics, uh, they represent a, a much better bet rather than an export-oriented international sector because I think over the next few months, we'll get more clarity as the data comes out and then we can take fresh positions. So by and large, I'm in agreement with what the UBS report has been suggesting. Point taken. So that's the latest uh, take on pharma. But uh, what's your take, Sunil, when it comes to uh, the agri side of things? And I'm talking about, of course, sugar as a pack, which is in a sweet spot at least today. Um, chemical companies back home are also showing signs of pickup, especially the specialty chemicals ones. Um, are you looking at these two, three pockets incrementally? I think sugar, I think, is very, very, uh, you know, event specific to the government announcing. I think it's not a sustainable thing to do. And tomorrow, if some other minister comes and says something contra, it could reverse back. So sugar is a very highly commodity-specific government puts in controls on a lot of things. So I would say that it's a very tactical play. But overall, on the agree part, uh, I would say that the good monsoon augurs well for rural-related stuff rather than pure agree. So what do I mean by that? I think tractors is a good play because with a good monsoon, good harvest, uh, people will then step up the buying of tractors. It's good for rural demand. With more money in the hands, people will go, the other housing and all coming in and helping. So I think that the rural story is a good play at this point of time, given the overall situation, but not necessarily a pure agree. In agree, I would say that, the, like I said, the sugar is also related to ethanol and related to the fact that crude prices are dropping. So how far the government is going forward on uh, ethanol blended petrol. So a lot of uncertainties around that, uh, that space. So... Pure agri-related uh, chemicals, for example, fertilizers and pesticides, you will be bullish on because good sowing, good harvesting. Next, it augurs well for the next rabi crop also coming up. So, very sector specific in the related spaces to agri rather than pure agri play as such. So, overall, broader rural play is what I would be focused on. All price and MSP hikes come into effect. Uh, what are the stocks that are going to benefit? And of course, what's the Word coming in from the industry body, Isma, let's listen in. The manufacturers who are uh, manufacturing ethanol, uh, especially the ones who have come up with a capacity recently for juice ethanol, I think would be favoring, uh, would be benefiting the most. I think Balrampur would be a beneficiary of it uh, because uh, they have come up with a facility in Mazapur, which is a dual feed facility running on juice as well as grains. I think for that asset, it has been, uh, they have not yet got a chance to sweat that asset fully. 
so i think they would be among the beneficiaries uh, in the listed space and within our coverage universe the government decision because that is something which uh, we will know only when they publish it but what isma has proposed based on the formula and that is coming to around 73 for the cane juice and around 67 uh, for the b heavy and c uh, uh, to around 59 60 rupees cane farmer perhaps uh, is the best suited and they have the highest income compared to all other stable crops so i believe uh, the government uh, will uh, decide whatever is the best and uh, uh keeping into mind the cost of production uh this they will also have to keep in mind the ultimate consumer prices so i think this is about creating a balance and uh, ultimately uh, to make sure we are also we are also always favoring that the farmer income should be insured that cane payment has to be made timely so i believe uh, uh, this will uh, consider everything and uh, for next year frp i think this is uh, good enough and uh, in future we will see how it turns out to be right that's the stay coming in on sugar sugar stocks definitely holding out very smartly let's see what pratap snacks as well as up to was a big news maker this morning and autumn investment and mahi madhusudan kela are looking to buy about 1.1 crore shares and that equates to a solid almost 47% stake from peak partners as well as secure capital for a consideration of about 846 odd crore rupees that's pratap snacks up to that huge bump up that you had earlier today that's mellowed down a fair bit right now in trade and then of course you know the goldman sachs upgrade on west life as well that continues to hold out target price to up to 1075 as we speak right now but sunil a bunch of these ipos right uh, we've heard it from swiggy next is going to be hyundai as well um what's what's your take i'm i'm sure you're going to take a look at the kind of pricing they come out with and then take a call and would you believe that as companies of course there must haves in one's portfolio so i would agree with the second half of the thing i think they are must have so uh, pricing is not so critical here because they are well understood companies uh, because zomato is already listed swiggy you have maruti mahindra tata is listed so for hyundai you have good benchmarks to decide how things are going you have very good data on market shares and what's happening so both these are i think very well understood from a business perspective right now what price you pay for the business that's a market thing you saw that you know bajaj housing well understood business still post ipo there's a huge uptick so i would say i wouldn't be so concerned about prices i believe these are good businesses worth buying into getting an opportunity especially for institutional investors i would attribute part of the cash that mutual fund managers have been keeping on the sidelines and raising as things that they want to apply for the institutional component of these so i would say that these are good business to buy uh, entry points you can always stagger you know buy some in the ipo buy some post ipos but they are definitely must own stocks you know portfolio because i think they represent the new india in the, in a way that you know both uh, swiggy and uh, hyundai i would say are going to be a part of our life for a significant part of time and the businesses are worth owning so i would not lay too much stress on the pricing aspect here unlike in the sme ipo space where it's a completely different ball game so it's a bigger long term thematic which looks positive and that's why sanil is looking at some of these names but you know there was that uh, inherent story as far as insurance is concerned as well sanil and we were talking about the structural shift that there is a lot of underpenetration in the country and uh, there should logically be more uh, you know upside for some of the names but pb fintech as a platform company is coming under pressure because of that entire foray into hospital space within the pure play insurance companies and then of course these platform companies what would be your view I would still back the insurance companies because see, platform companies will generally go on a volume base, you know, to to make of the fee of the platform, right? So they would gun for that. They will probably take on initial losses in a bit to build the business. But I think the insurance companies, at the end of the day, with their actual thing and all that, I think the long term business model is far more on solid grounds, right? So I would, to me, extend as a medium to long term investor, I would back the insurance companies. platform companies i would say are short term pops you can buy them uh, based them tactically but again the longer term mutual story like say the underpenetration story is a huge huge opportunity and these also would be must have in one's portfolio 
Okay, but since we're talking about PB FinTech, that stock has been on a slide. In fact, let's pull up the five-day chart if we can because that stock must be down, what, 18 to 20 percent over the last five days? Uh, today, of course, it's down in the trading session, but over the last five days, okay, it's a single-digit decline coming in for PB FinTech. That's the view, but uh, let me take it across and hear out what uh, Manas or for Bernstein had to tell us with respect to this foray that they're making into the hospitals possibly. There's a lot of lack of clarity around what the exact plan is. The media broke the story. The company not denied it. Yashish has spoken about it in the previous con calls as well. So it seems like they want to do this. Now, how they go about doing this is the question. Is it going to be capital intensive or it will be a partnership of sorts? It seems like uh, that is the big question that's weighing on the stock because people bought into the story for PB FinTech. Uh, for its strong growth, its capital light business model. I think uh, investor communication on that front would be helpful in cooling off speculation. And I think the stock is now stabilized, but the last three days has been very, very volatile. So I think clarity on that front will be helpful. Uh, we've written a note today, which talks about the key questions for the management, essentially, what is the business plan? It is good for the consumer and probably good for hospitals and insurers, and therefore good for policy bazaar. But then at what cost does all of this come up? That is the key question at this point in time in my mind. Right, okay. In the meantime, Sunil, uh, great to have you on the show. We'll let you go on that note. Let me also get in some closing trading ideas as well. Kunal, what's on your list? So I'll go with the band Titan. That's a chart which has made a very strong comeback, uh, in closing in about the 3800 mark today which is a fresh swing high for Titan and historically we've seen that the stock has done pretty well whenever it's managed to cross back above its previous swing high. So betting on Titan over the near term. Right. Naresh, what about your closing ideas? So that would be a buy on Reliance Industries. The stock has crossed the last three, four day highs and is in a uh, touch of uh, crossing the last two month highs. It looks interesting. Good price volume action right now in the day. So expecting it to again go back to 3100, 3150. Rick, then on that note, we are just marginally higher as we speak right now. BPCL, your big, big mover, it's moved up almost 7% as we speak right now. Sun Pharma, Cipla, Hindalco, Divi's, Pharma is pretty charged up. Uh, take a break, be right back for more. Welcome back. Well, there's a bit of a dip in the market. In fact, we are below the mark of 26,200 as we speak. Bank Nifty has taken a bit of a tumble as well. Let's pull up the Bank Nifty because that one is the key underperformer at the moment, if I have it right. That index is down over 500 points at the moment and pressure coming in from a lot of these entities like Kotak, ICICI, HDFC Bank. These are in the red. What's actually holding one end of the market is Reliance. And you can't see it because Nifty is down. But that one is contributing almost 45 points. So if it was not for Reliance, which is at the highest point of the trading session, the market would have taken a deeper tumble. That is a, a sole soldier, which is contributing almost 50 points to the Nifty up move right now. Otherwise, we would have been staring at a much larger cut for ourselves. But is it perhaps an account of some of the flows that we should be expecting and some of the individual names will be in focus on account of that? Let me take it across to Somit to figure that out. Somit, of course, come Monday, BEL and Trent will be the new entrance in the Nifty 50 pack. But what kind of flows adjustment are we expecting? Yes, the uh, changes in the Nifty indices will be reflecting on Monday, that is September 38. But flows are expected uh, anytime now on these stocks. Firstly, it's Trent and BL, which are getting included in the Nifty 50. Trent could see an inflow of close to 470 million US dollars, while BL could see an inflow of close to 340 million US dollars. BV's Lab and LTI Mindtree are moving out of the Nifty 50, and because of this, the outflows are expected to be anywhere between 150 to 190 million US dollars. A host of changes in the Nifty next 50. Five stocks that are getting included BHEL, JSW Energy. Macrotech, NHPC and Union Bank and these stocks are expected to see an inflow of anywhere between 30 to 50 million US dollars while five stocks that are getting excluded are Colgate, SRF, Marico, SBI Card and Berger Paint and on the back of this outflows of around 20 to 57 million US dollars are expected. One change when it comes to the Nifty Bank Index that is Canada Bank is coming in while uh, Bandhan Bank is moving out. Canada Bank could see an inflow of close to 44 million US dollars while Bandhan Bank is expected to see an outflow of around 37 million US dollars. 
Now, some weight changes that are expected in the CPIC index as well. NTPC's weight is expected to fall, which because of which there could be an outflow of close to 132 million US dollars. And three stocks who will see an increase in the weightage are BEL, Coal India, and ONGC. And inflows are expected to be anywhere between 30 million US dollars in these three stocks individually. Let's welcome on board Nitin Reheja as well and find out what he's making of the market right now. Nitin, hi. Uh, good to have you on the show as always. Uh, you know, just wanted your take on the, you know, slew of IPOs that were has been seeing off late. Of course, you know, waiting up to uh, Swiggy as well as uh, Hyundai too. That's going to be the big one. Uh, but the kind of valuations that they list at and the kind of gains they even make uh, post that, is that any reason to worry? Well, you know, I think uh, the kind of uh, uh, inflows that our markets are seeing, uh, actually, these kind of uh, su the supply of our paper is very, very important and needed. Otherwise, you're sort of driving existing stocks valuations to levels which make, uh, you know, people very uncomfortable and which are not sustainable. And the good part about this IPOs coming in is the fact that if you've seen last month, I think finally... Foreign investors who had largely sat out uh, the last three years, if you, I mean, look at the numbers, uh, this has been a domestic driven rally. So they are finally starting to participate uh, very actively in the IPO market. So I think uh, you are going to see more and more of that happen uh, because, uh, and people are going to look to try and uh, sort of, not that these IPOs are coming particularly cheap, but even if it means playing for the listing game, you're going to start seeing that. Now, you know, historical data has shown that uh, when you look at the whole IPO uh, market, over a one-year period or two-year period, uh, a lot of them, you know, don't trade anywhere close to the initial listing pop. So I think, you know, over a period of time, we will see that. But I think right now it's... Uh, it's a time where everybody wants to participate and everybody and it's 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 good from an indian market perspective if you're seeing more and more uh, paper coming in let's see whether that um, entire gush really helps the indian markets or not but what's really helping right now um, is that china stimulus in fact hang seng has managed to clock gains of over 10 percent within a matter of week itself since that announcement came through and it's been one of the best weeks that uh, index has seen in a long long time what are some of those stimulus measures and how exactly what exactly will be the impact on the same and how's been the reaction so far let me take it across to ashesha to get more details on this one well, absolutely. A whole host of measures being taken by the Chinese government and Chinese central bank because of which globally commodities have been rising and back home in India, Indian metal stocks have also been shining bright. They've gone ahead and cut one-year policy rate and this is the first infusion, capital infusion that Chinese central bank has done into banks since 2008. So that's the kind of uh, policy boost that they are trying to do into the Chinese economy because of which global commodity prices have also been on a surge. Uh, let's Let's also talk about some of the measures that they've taken. They've gone ahead and lowered seven-day reverse repo rate to about 1.5% from 1.7% earlier. Stock stabilization fund will infuse about 113 billion yuan into the economy. 0.5% lower RRR is what they've undertaken in order to infuse about $142 billion. And they've also reduced minimum down payment ratio by about 15, uh, from 25% to 15% for second per purchase of homes. They've all, the Public Bank of China has also covered state loans for unsold homes. So it was at 60% earlier and they will now be financing 100% of those purchases. So a slew of measures being taken by the Chinese economy. Uh, remember growth slowed down. China earlier was growing in double digits which is slowed down to about 5-6% to 6 in the last 4-5 to five years or so post-COVID. Real estate market has been under pressure. Several real estate players have also declared bankruptcy which is impacting real estate market and commodity demand globally. Several demographic challenges, rising debt level are some of the reasons why Chinese market, especially the real estate market, which contributes about 60% of China's GDP, has been under pressure for quite some time now. Now let's also understand the impact of the stimulus measures that the Chinese government has taken. 
So as you mentioned, uh, Chinese index has seen a significant recovery over the last few days or so. Today it is up 4.5%. Chinese index is up nearly 15% this week alone and has recovered nearly 16% from the lows that we saw on the 18th of September. So solid recovery in the Chinese market and the repercussions of which were felt back home in India on metal stocks. So Nifty Metal Index, the biggest sectoral gainer today and for the week, it is up nearly 7% this week. Uh, and we have the likes of Nalco, which is up 13.5%, Vedanta, Tata Steel up nearly 12 to 13 odd percent, Sale, NMDC, Hindalco, Jindal Stainless, all of these stocks have gained anywhere between 8.5 to 13 odd percent uh, from the lows of the 19th of September. So solid recovery uh, that we have seen in Indian metal stocks on account of a slew of measures that are being taken by the Chinese Central Bank. And that's being felt in some of the metal stocks as well. What a move they have seen all through this week. Nuresh, you believe that metals is going to be a sustained trend? So, would prefer the aluminium side of it compared to the steel. And it could be a sustained trend because not only are we seeing a recovery in the uh, stocks, but we are seeing a good recovery in the base aluminium prices. Alumina also is doing well. So, that augurs well for Hindalco, Nalco and Vedanta. So, any dips going forward... So dip back to 730-35 levels on uh, Hindalco, 195 to 202 levels for Nalco and Vedanta closer to 490 odd levels would be a good entry point if we get a dip. And structurally, the bias remains very positive on all three of them. Okay, point taken. So that's the take coming in on some of the metal counters. But uh, just shifting focus, Nitin, and talking about the healthcare space as well. Today, UBS has initiated coverage. They're quite sanguine on the likes of Sun Pharma, etc. as well. Um, what's your take within pharma? What's your uh, you know pecking order within, let's say, the export-oriented names, domestic, hospital, diagnostic? So I think clearly, if you look at from a long-term structural perspective, uh, the domestic story in the form of healthcare, the hospital segment, uh, clearly looks very exciting. I think uh, the kind of penetration that is required or the bed penetration that we have is yet so low. So I think it, it is a multi-decade story that we will see playing out as far as hospitals is concerned. Uh, I think the, the likes of the generic pharma uh, business, the large exporters, uh, they're really going to, a lot of them have evolved and they're really going to now sort of act as quasi-defensives. So they have a business which will keep on growing at steady state uh, basis. And as I think, you know, they will be like a part of your core portfolio. But I think a lot of growth is really going to come from domestic pharma. Okay, so that's a view coming in on domestic pharma, but definitely some of these stocks in focus. What else is passing around? Let's take a look of some of the other uh, movers as well. Uh, Nuresh, what's happening to Reliance Industries? Uh, is this a big breakout that we should watch out for? So the first indications of a trend change on Reliance Industries as of now. Uh, uh, today, it has crossed the last three, four days highs. In the process where Nifty has made new highs, Reliance was not participating. Then if we go back the last two months, 3,080, 3,085, if that crosses, then we get a reversal and a short at a new all-time high. So a good uh, price action today. It's a buy with a view that it could cross into new all-time highs. Right, okay, that's that on Reliance. The color for, um, you know, the large caps, uh, while, of course, some of the select pharma no names are holding out, there's, of course, BPCL, that's on a tear, 6.5% higher. Anisha just flagged off Reliance, 2% of an uptick coming in there as well. A um, couple of these auto stocks are not looking bad. Uh, Nitin just wanted to get your sense in because, you know, PVs has languished for about two to three odd months now. Two-wheelers, of course, the demand goes very steady. Uh, given that we're at the cusp of the festive season, does it seem like PVs could catch up finally? Well, I think PVs have had, a, you know, has had a very good run. And I think it's going through that phase where... And it, this was also run led by... Uh, new models, so if you saw the kind of uh, uh, new models, especially in SUVs that got introduced over the last couple of years, and that's what really driven. This year, you know, has been more like a year of consolidation. We haven't seen the same velocity as far as new models is concerned. I think, but there is a lot of optimism as far as the festival season is concerned. Uh, there is a lot of inventory in the pipeline, which is already built in. Uh, so I think uh, you, I don't see the kind of growth that we saw in the last few years uh, come. 
but clearly the festival season should see some amount of sequential bump up uh, which should be you know uh, which should actually set the direction for the future because the kind of uh, inventory in the pipeline if it does not get absorbed could actually have an impact uh, going into the last quarter so i think this is going to be the, the festival season hopefully uh, given that we have had bountiful monsoons, inflation is down, should actually do well. Uh, and so I think the next couple of months will be good for PVs. Whether that works out or not, but it's definitely going to be very crucial time for, um, you know, the, some of these auto companies because the inventory is high in the system. It might just hint at a downturn if it doesn't liquid, uh, you know, um, get sorted out in terms of the inventory which is there. But hear out what Mr. R.C. Bhargava of Maruti had to say on the festive demand as well as what exactly is in the works at, in Karnataka. You know, every year, of course, the festival season is something to which all car manufacturers look forward to because that is when there is a massive move towards higher buying. This year, particularly that... Uh, excitement about the festive season is there very much so because as you rightly said just now sales in the period from april to now in quite muted and all our hopes are centered on the festival season driving up sales so that this year does not end up flat or with very marginal growth I can only hope that uh, states will follow what UP has done. And whether it's Karnataka or any, any other state, we would welcome such uh, steps taken to encourage different forms of technology use and different forms of meeting the energy goals of this country and the net zero goals, because use of different technologies which are better than just petrol or diesel are absolutely essential if we are going to get to our target of net zero and prevent high pollution in the intervening years. But I do believe that going forward, a modification and simplification in the tax structure is going to be crucial for giving that extra impetus which will create the demand, which will then in turn drive investments and manufacturing. I think there are many people in government who have been speaking about the need for rationalization. The issue in India is, of course, that uh, this kind of rationalization requires not only the central government to be convinced of it, Okay, so that's the latest coming in from uh, Mr. R.C. Bhargava about the festive season as well as what is expected from Karnataka and whether there could be some sort of push coming in. In the last few minutes, Kalpa through power has shot up. Actually, we did speak with the management just a little while ago and we should try and pull up a sound bite because they were confident of maintaining their growth profile of 20-25%. They were very hopeful of the kind of demand momentum which is there. Plus, that entire national electricity plan is something that should augur well for the uh, for the company as well as the country. We'll try and play that soundbite. But before that, what's your take, uh, Nitin, as far as the entire power ecosystem is concerned, that national electricity plan coming in, 9 lakh crore getting added to the system? So I think power is on a roll. That, that there's no two theories about it, that if you see what's happening in the power sector, especially as far as solar power is concerned, uh, and the kind of capex plans that are being around. In fact, if you see a lot of the IPOs that are coming out, they're coming out in this segment of the market. And you know, uh, this time around, uh, it's really happening with large entities who are uh, of size and so on and so forth. So it's not, you know the last time around you had this phenomena where you had new players entering into the segment uh, uh, and having standalone plants, and then when demand slowed down or some of them had raw material issues, you had this whole cycle of uh, bad debts take place. So I think power and the power demand over the next five years is only going to go up dramatically. Uh, I think we, we won't be surprised if uh, the entire ecosystem, starting from utilities to uh, equipment manufacturers to engineering and capital goods companies, uh, participate and do well this plan is, uh, you know, there's there's always been a lot of capacity addition that has happened over the last 10 years in the country. But, you know, to have a articulated plan which talks about the next 10 years 
in a very progressive and futuristic way from the viewpoint of grid reliability, access 24 seven, a uh, very efficient system of generation to transmission all the way from you know pit to plug. I think uh, this this policy is is really something which, uh, in my opinion, path breaking for the entire uh, country from a, a demand standpoint in the next eight to ten years. So you know, I think I wouldn't like to go so much into the future. We've had a good run over the last couple of years, and you know, you're right about twenty twenty five percent as a CAGR over the last couple of years that we've grown at. Uh, you know, as we grow further, 20%, even at these levels, is very large numbers considering the scale of our organization. And I think we would like to be conservative and take, uh, you know, execution more seriously and uh, ensure that we deliver, uh, you know, projects in a timely manner at the uh, margins that everybody expects us to deliver at, rather than just have pure top line uh, chase. Okay, that's the word coming in from the Kalpatru Projects Management. Just take a look at oil and gas. That, of course, continues to be the strongest story led by BPCL as well as Reliance. Both those stocks holding out very well. Today, some of those chemical names as well are not looking bad. Uh, fertilizer and chemical, that is. So, Adipak Nitride, Chambal Fertilizer, Skoromundal, UPL, all of them are going pretty strong along with, of course, PI Industries as well added in that pack. Other than that, for the index, uh, we're still just about very, very quiet. 26,354 uh, on the index, about a minute 45 odd point uptick that we continue to sit on. But, uh, Naresh, any BTST strategies? So, that would be a buy on uh, Reliance Industries itself, which has seen a tick right now. Stop loss at 3,015, target price of 2100. Second is a buy on Can Bank, which has seen some uh, volume jump up right now. Strict stop loss at 111, target price of 108. Kunal, what about you? That would be a bunch. Fertilizers, uh, the stock uh, finally coming out of a breakout of a major multi-week, multi-month consolidation. So the target of 555 would recommend a buy with a stop loss at 515. And Bank of Burda could be a breakout candidate. Uh, the stock has come back above its 50 moving average, breaking uh, you know, past about the 248 mark. So would look out for targets of 260, stop loss at 243. Taken. Actually, some of these candidates uh, for which we are seeing sudden reactions might also be part of that NSC reject. But nonetheless, Pulapa Sundaram Finance, that one is moving quite smartly. Brigade Enterprises was fairly volatile. It suddenly shot up 7-8%. Now it's cooled off a bit. And on the losing side as well, there are many names which are coming on the list. For instance, a macrotech developer has taken a knock of 7%. JSW Energy is down 6%. Home First Finance is down a solid 8% right now. PTM, Honasa Consumer... Uh, and even Mahindra Life Space, for that matter, has suddenly taken a bit of a knock. Kunal, these dips that you are seeing on select real estate names, a Macrotech, a Mahindra Life Space, um, some of the other names as well that we talked about, even from power sector, JSW Energy, etc. Would you buy the dip? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll uh, recommend a buy on dips at current levels because my sense is that the real estate stocks and the indices are coming back after three, four months of price correction. Some of them had corrected by you know a tune of 15%. 10%, some of them even 20%, the high beta ones. And what we've seen right now is a classic phase of mean reversion completed and the sector making a comeback in terms of momentum. So when a market gets back into its risk appetite mode, uh, you know, generally these are the kind of stocks and sectors which tend to see a follow through up move on a week on week basis. So today could be an off day for the real estate stocks as well as, well as for you know, a few of the other sectors. But I believe that this could be a strong trend in the making. So buying this dip could be a good strategy. Do you think the consensus on the street seems to be private banks, right? Because they are the ones which haven't moved, although uh, moved selectively, I should say. Is the bottom-up story within private banks the pocket to bet on right now? Well, you know, bottom-up has always paid through, uh, you know, over any any in any market cycle, correct? But if you look at the larger private bank story, there are two things that have played out here, right? And the market's really out here are playing a rotational game among sectors. And for a very long time, you know, uh, these banks have been out of favor. Also led by the fact that due to over ownership uh, among the FPI pack and because the FPIs have largely sold down, we've seen valuations correct. Uh, and the cycle has also turned, uh, you know, with the rate cut cycle going to impact their NIM margin. So there's been all of that built into this. I think the worst from uh, pricing perspective has built in. So 
So if today you're looking to invest from a valuation perspective, they're trading to close to, uh, while the market is at all time highs, the absolute valuation of these banks is nowhere close to what they have always traded at. So I think the market is ready to take a contrarian view. And I, I, I would believe that once we see the first few rate hikes takes place, that probably the whole sector would have bottomed out and is now looking you know, from ahead from there. So I think by and large, the private bank trade is there to play. And within that, you could see a divergence in terms of performance led by bottom up. Okay, point taken. That's a view coming in. Just uh, you know, marking some more buzzers. Take a look at Phoenix Mills. Um, has shot up quite a bit. Oil India is also coming up on my radar on account of a bit of an uptick. Ajanta Pharma is the other one, and all of these stocks will come up for you on the screen because quite a few of them are su seeing sudden moves. As I said, partly could be on account of some of the flows adjustments also. On the losing side, let's pull up PVR. Is there is there a bit of a disappointment there and a bit of a slip because that's what the stock is uh, you know suggesting to me. Yes, down about three and a half percent. You have PTM, Honasa, JSW Energy, even Home First Finance for that matter. Matter. A lot of these stocks coming under pressure at the moment. Um, Nuresh, any specific stock ideas that are coming up on your radar? Because there's a lot of volatility in the last 20 30 minutes, individual names. So, I would look at a contra bet on, uh, say, some of the banking names uh, uh, which have seen outflows or so something like Bandhan Bank, which has come down. You have RBL Bank, which is at the lower end of the range. So, that would be a contra by. Uh, and maybe a sell on something like a trend and a BEL uh, going contra to the. Uh, flows today. Kunal, on the other hand, I recall you mentioning in the morning that the distinct factor, um, you know, in this market is the fact that volatility has come down and the VIX mm. has seen quite a bit of cool off. Mm. Retreat for us whether that seems like a continual trend. Yeah, it seems like a continual trend because over the last one month, one and a half months from August mid, I think except for that first week of August where there was a heightened volatility post that, we've actually seen the India VIX trading below the 50 and the 200 moving averages. And that too for a sustained period of time. Now, you know, the good part is that we are still not down to that, uh, you know, range of 10 or 9.5 for the India VIX because that generally becomes a more frothy territory for the markets when the India VIX drops down, uh, drops down to a single digit. Uh, and, you know, uh, interestingly, what we've also seen that the India VIX has remained to a range of 11, 11.5 towards 13 to 13 and a half. So even at a point when, you know, the, the Fed meet uh, was due for the markets, that time also the India VIX had not shot up significantly, which means the markets were not anticipating any major kind of a volatility. Even at current levels, with the India VIX still at 11, 11.5 odd mark, I think still indicates that the markets are not uh, indicative of any kind of an immediate or near-term volatility. So I think that's a positive sign for the index, which means traders can hold on to their long positions, uh, you know, with... Uh, you know, select uh, kind of a trading stop losses and continue to ride the trend on the upside. Okay, continue to ride the trend on the upside. Thanks, Kunal, for that. In fact, we let you go on that note, Naresh, as well as uh, Nitin. Thanks so much for being with us today and uh, helping us through with uh, helping us wade through the volatility that we have seen in the last one hour. But for the week gone by, it's been a good one. Ultimately, twenty six thousand two hundred is what we scaled for the first time ever. We are just ending slightly below that mark. A gain of almost 1.5% coming in. It's the third straight week of advance coming in for the Indian market, so can't really complain much. Overall, it's BPCL that led the charge. Metals were also fairly active in the trading session all throughout the week, so that was one of your top gainers in terms of the index, and Tata Steel was one of the stocks on the upside. Nifty Midcap Index also hit a fresh high this time around. It's the third consecutive week for a gain on that one as well. Sale, NNDC, again, the metal pack shining bright as well. We also had Nifty Bank advancing for the third consecutive week, crossing the mark of 54,400. Bank of Baroda, Federal Bank, these were some of the top gainers today. Nifty Auto, record high level, Maruti Suzuki being one of the biggest gainers there. Other names were also quite active. You had Nifty Metal up almost 7% this week, so a very, very solid charged up reaction coming in on the metal index. Remember, China as well as Hang Seng has also seen a gain of almost 12-13% this week, so a bit of a rub off happening there. What did not do well, I think what was a bit um, you know, off this week was the public sector entity. They had some good days, some bad days, so it was a mix there. And the mid cap and the small cap underperformance was also quite visible. They perhaps ended the week in the green, but there were those bouts of volatility that were coming in Aisha. And then of course, stocks like PB Fintech etc. lost out materially this week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this week, of course, you had a charge move 
from metals, from autos, from banks, they all were the ones which really held up very smartly. The week though has closed in um, a little bit somber, but that's okay. It's been a stunning one regardless. But that's it uh, on this edition of Closing Trades. It's a goodbye from Anisha and me. There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits and then break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to arise.